Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're going to paint a jar of seashells using pan pastels. Of course, you can use whatever you want. Um, I'm going to use some uh, pan pastels and pastel pencils, and I'm going to do that on toned gray sketch paper by Strathmore. I've used the Arteza Tone Tan uh, sketchbook paper in Sketchbook Sunday before. The Arteza brand has a little more tooth to it. The um, Strathmore is a little bit smoother. If you're going to do this with regular stick pastels, I would recommend that you start off with a rougher paper. I have a real-time version of this up in Critique Club for Critique Club members, so check that out. If you don't know what it is, I'll have a link in the video description for you. I started off by sketching a rounded rectangle to encompass the jar that I'm drawing there, and uh, now I'm just kind of putting in some details with a white pastel pencil. And I want to get all this stuff done before I really dig in with the pan pastels because I can already erase this, I can alter it, it's not precious yet, and that's what I'm doing right here. I'm using a soft white plastic eraser to erase any marks that I don't think I need. I honestly should erase a little bit more on that top of that lid because as I'm working through I realized that I had that line up a little too high. Um, I tried to take the photo from the perspective of where I was standing and looking at that jar of seashells. I had it on top of a box with a piece of white, sitting on a piece of white paper um, right in front of me on my table, so I tried to get the photo right from that vantage point so you'd be able to see it as I see it. Uh, now, you really can't see all the seashells clearly in the jar, so I made sure that I sketched a few that I could see pretty clearly, and um, I'm gonna focus on them as I start to, to paint there. Now, I've just put out the nine colors or so I think I'm going to use. It's not a very saturated palette, but there is a lot of value, um, a lot of variety of values, which means lights and darks. So I'll be able to mix and blend and and, uh, and get a good variety of colors there. I have a few tints, which means a color plus white. I've got a few um, extra dark shades, which means color plus a lot of uh, a lot of black, and I'll be able to get a good variation. But I do have my other pan pastels scattered along my, my big work table. I'm working in the basement today. So I have um, I have those kind of on the table in front of me so I can, you know, pull them if I need them. I think I needed to add just a couple extra colors. But as long as you have a good variety of values, you're going to be all right. So if you're sitting at home saying, Lindsay, geez, Louise, I can't afford to buy all those pan pastels just for this project. Well, I don't blame you. They're kind of pricey and you'd want to make sure you wanted to use them a lot before you invested them. If you have a set of gray chalks, like gray charcoal, like a grayscale set, use that. If you got a set of grayscale markers, use that. If you've got, um, you know, some ink and some water to dilute it, some black and white ink, use that. You know, you use whatever you want to do. The The Sketchbook Sunday is what I'm personally working on to try to just kind of um, grow as an artist and I want you to do whatever you need to grow as an artist. Now what I'm showing you there is my container of these little, uh, they're these little foam socks that go over these palette knives that are sold to work with pan pastels. Now before I invested in pan pastels, I bought the tools and I thought, ah, I'm just going to use these with my stick pastels, but honestly my stick pastels were not soft enough for these, so I wouldn't recommend those if you are using stick pastels. I would just recommend getting some like makeup applicators or um, or some like, you know, firmer, like blending stumps, felt stumps, things like that, uh, because the, the softer foam just isn't, just doesn't have enough grit to pull the color off your pastel sticks. Or you can draw with your pastel sticks and then blend them around with the pastel uh, foams. That works pretty well. Also, like I mentioned before, this paper is kind of smooth. It works great with pan pastels because you really put so little down that it takes forever to use them up. Um, so I feel like you get a lot more for your money with the pan pastels just so they go a lot further you're not putting as many thick passages you don't have the dust to tap off into your trash can i think i tapped off my um picture a couple times so uh, you know i definitely think it's worth the money if you're going to use them if you're not going to use them if you're timid or if you don't have the space to lay them out on your table don't bother but if you if you think you're going to use them then they i think they are a good value compared to stick pastels uh, so i'm just uh layering up here um getting the kind of scalloped edge of my little oyster shell there i'm using the tools to help um, this tool here is a stiffer blender. This came from Joey and it's called a, a brush tastic or something and it came in a little set of four. Those are great if you have stick pastels because they are firm enough to uh, push around the stick pastels and to pull them off the sticks. But um, they're almost a little too firm for the pan pastels. But I thought I would show it just in case it's something that would be useful to you. Now to redefine some shadows that are in the glass, I'm using a kind of a steel gray pastel pencil 
and I find that they're a nice complement to the pan pastels because sometimes you just need those sharp lines. Um, it's not like a, you can use the edge of a stick. I mean, you get your applicators, but it's not as crisp as you would have from like a pastel stick. So using a pastel pencil really helps. And this thing here is a kneaded eraser. It looks like clay, but you press it onto your surface and you can remove excess color. You can um, actually use it as an eraser and rub a little bit and remove some excess. Uh, and it's really nice to have. Now I want to add the cast shadow from, from the jar. Now there's a couple shadows you can see uh, from the jar because I have so many lights on in my studio, but I just went with the most dominant one and I used the erasers to kind of redefine and soften my edges and until I got it just right. So, um, you know, if you have to work at it a little bit, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to redefine. Don't be afraid to add more. That's why I was actually looking to see if pan pastels were non-toxic or not because I thought I heard that they were, but I couldn't find that information on my pamphlets. Um, they're definitely lower in dust than your stick pastels. So if you have like, you don't like your hands getting that chalky feeling on your hands or the dust, then, um, then the, but you want to do pastels. These are a really good alternative for that. Now I'm getting to the point though here where it's getting difficult to stick more pastel down. And you're going to see here as I'm trying to sketch on, um, some details with the pencil that it, it doesn't want to grab quite so well. However, where I'm going to be putting in some details, I'm going to be putting in that, that like black iron handle, like a clamp clasp, whatever you call that in the jar. I, I, I'm fine with it not grabbing too much because it's, it'll be easier to kind of smudge it out or erase it if I don't get it just right. So I didn't like transfer, I didn't draw on better paper and transfer a perfect drawing. I kind of am going along as, uh, as I come to it. So I like to be able to have that ability to, you know, rework. So I'm just using this brown to get that, get that, um, get that shape in. It's kind of an awkward shape. So I just want to make sure that it makes sense. Like where the, uh, like that wire is going to be going into the jar where it's going to be going around the jar, the shadows in the jar. And I just want to kind of get it in there with a pencil and then try to add a little of the, uh, the pan pastel on top. But I am definitely feeling that I have saturated the, uh, the tooth of the paper. I did grab another Brown. I think it's like a burnt umber extra dark and adding that into the iron and also into some of the darker areas of the jar. Both there are reflect or refractions of the wire through the other side and also just darker areas that I see. Now uh, I'm going to try adding some um, some other highlights and things to this, but I will have to fix this. And I want to talk a second about fixative. I'm going to be using Krylon Workable Fixative, and I like that because it is um, it actually it doesn't seem to alter the colors too much if you use really light layers, but it does. You know, you want to do it before your final highlights because it will darken things a little bit. Um, so I just wanted to give you that recommendation before we get too far. I am just kind of tapping on some suggestions of imprinting on the side of the jar, like from the, um, you know, it's got the maker's mark on the edge. And I'm trying to get whatever details I can before I do my spray, just so that once I spray it, um, I will kind of seal down what's already there. And then I'll just be doing a few final touches over top. So I just, I'm kind of doing as much as I can before I have to, uh, before I have to go over and spray it. Oh, I want to mention if you want some more help with, um, with pastels, if you want to learn pastels, I do have a course on pastel painting. It's introductory to soft pastels. We go over stick and pan pastels. You don't need to have both to do the course. You can have either. And I'll talk about how to, um, how to transfer directions for either way. So if you're trying to work with pan pastels and you're watching a stick pastel tutorial, or you're working with stick pastels and you're watching a pan pastel tutorial like this, you can alter it and you can, um, you know, make it work for the medium you're using. So I'll link that down below as well. And with a little coupon code, so you can save a little cash while you, if you want to try that class out. So I've sprayed it and you can see it didn't really affect the color too much, but it's letting my white really uh, stand up on this. Um, if I sprayed it over the white, it would kind of uh, dampen the white tones a little bit. It would make them more transparent. So you want to do this before you put your final whites on there. But doesn't that really make it kind of glossy and sparkle? I really like uh, adding those final whites. It's kind of your treat at the end. It's like your dessert at the end of your painting meal is to add those little those little white highlights. I just think they make everything look so fresh. And um, I didn't have any smudging issues after putting the, the fixative down. Obviously, I would be able to smudge that white and that black that I just put down. I think it was actually a dark gray. Um, but 
yeah, it, it's going to be fine in the sketchbook. I don't think it's going to smudge at all. And that's how I painted that jar. Remember, there's a real time tutorial of this in my critique club. And if you want to learn more about pastel painting, check out my pastel painting course. Thanks for watching. Please give me a thumbs up before you go. And until next time, happy crafting.